All right, what's up, Hub at Home, week three. It is April 5th, and we are continuing our series. In fact, we're finishing our series called Undefeated tonight. Have you ever uh, experienced that feeling where when something ends, you kind of don't want it to end? Or maybe, honestly, in this season, something didn't get to end. Some things didn't even get to start the baseball season. I'm here with my, my Astros hat, trying to trying to get my family to become Houston Astros fans. Tough season to try to do that. But the baseball season didn't even get started. We barely got into spring training. And now I'm seeing Instagram videos of these baseball players like in their homes, like playing catch and, and all this kind of stuff. It's sad. I'm a huge NBA fan and I feel like that got ripped away from us. We got right past the all-star break and we were headed into what I think is the most important, most exciting part of the season, right as we get into the playoffs. Playoffs last like two months. It's amazing. We didn't get to even see the beginning of the playoffs. I don't know about you, but but there's some things that are getting ripped away from us. I know we've talked about how you seniors, I know that you're you're wrestling with right now, you're not getting to experience all of your all of the stuff you you like to experience. And and every grade and every stage has a little bit of that going on. Some of us are mourning something because it's ended, and maybe it's even ended prematurely. Who knows if we're going back to school and all of that. The disciples felt that way a lot heavier then we feel it right now. If you have read through the gospels with us these last few weeks, you know uh, that as Jesus got closer to the crucifixion, that they kept asking him to clarify, like, what is it that you're doing here? What is it that you're after? Because you can't die. You're the Messiah. You're the King. There was people expecting him to raise up a military presence and kind of, um, and kind of dominate culture because what they understood Jesus to be was the fulfilling of God's kingdom here on earth in a very powerful, uh, but also, um, you know, in a way that we experience, you know, presidents are important, actors, celebrities, athletes, they're all important. Armies carry uh, away, economies control things. They experienced, they expected Jesus to bring all of that. So when Jesus would say, I'm going to die. They didn't understand it. Fast forward all the way to the moments that the disciples are watching Jesus experience his trials, experience his crucifixion, and they're wondering, how can this be? One of the things that I've said over and over in the past is there's this, there's this moment in the scriptures where Peter, after the crucifixion, says, I'm going fishing. For me, um, I'm reading that and I'm thinking, Okay, he's gonna go back to the thing he knows. He's gonna go do the thing that gives him comfort. Maybe he just needs some alone time, quite honestly. All of us in some form would have reacted to Jesus' death in that same way. But what we know is that while he died on Friday, he rose again three days later on Sunday. We call it Good Friday because of what that crucifixion meant. He defeated sin in that moment, but he really, quite honestly, defeated sin and death in the resurrection. Track with me here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 54, it begins this way. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We see all through 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul is going to talk to people and he's going to tell us how important the resurrection is. Verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was within me. You know by now that when we become Christ followers, the Holy Spirit comes to live with us, abide with us, to dwell with us. The Holy Spirit is really, truly one of the best gifts of salvation because in all the ways that we would love to have been able to see Jesus do all these 
miracles uh, to turn water into wine and to expand and multiply the fishes and loaves to feed the 5,000, the 10,000, the 15,000, whatever the number was. We would have loved to see those things and maybe to walk with Jesus, to be able to touch him. But the truth is the Holy Spirit walks with us in a very personal way day by day, moment by minute, 24-7, 365 for the rest of our lives. He truly is the gift inside of us. Now here's why that matters. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us, which is the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That means inside of you, believers, Christ followers, you have grave robbing power inside of you. What Jesus put inside of you, what God put inside of you in that moment was himself in the form of the Holy Spirit, giving you help, giving you comfort, giving you conviction, but also giving you power. The very power in this message right now is not in me. It's not because I'm a good teacher or a good pastor or a good person. I'm a good Christian. It's not because I'm powerful as a person. Surely I'm bringing my gifts, but understand the gifts are not inside of me because I mustered them up. The gifts are inside of me because the Holy Spirit inside of me gave me those gifts, is giving me power and authority, quite honestly, giving me joy to give this message right now because the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in me, but also Christ followers is inside you. That means the sting of death is removed. Sure, if you've experienced the death of a friend or of loved one, a family member, it's incredibly sad. But what we know is that when we as Christ followers know someone who was in Christ and passes on, they are no longer, it's not, it's not that they're buried in the ground. They are with our Heavenly Father in that moment. We know that scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know that the hope that is in us is that one day when we die or when Jesus comes back, that we will be with Jesus in heaven for eternity. And even better than that, it's not that he leaves us right now by ourselves, because when you got saved, you didn't go straight to heaven, did you? When I got saved, I didn't go straight to heaven. No, the Holy Spirit inside of us is guiding and comforting and convicting us as we walk this life out. So he gives us comfort now, and he gives us hope for eternity. Death, where is your sting? So what we've learned in this series called Undefeated is that separation is defeated. We know that we are present with the Lord in relationship with him because of what Jesus did on the cross. We know that sin is defeated, that Jesus on the cross through his resurrection defeated sin, left it in the grave, he defeated it. But also death is defeated. Listen, what I love about this is that Jesus is the one who did the work. He didn't leave it to us to muster up the power, to, to pull ourselves up by our spiritual bootstraps. He truly gave us a gift. I think about it like this. I've got these three boys and they're wonderful, but raising children has its challenges. And one of those challenges is potty training. And one of the elements of potty training is what happens between the moment that you send your kid to bed and when that kid wakes up. And lots of times that's the last, at least our experience, that's the last element of potty training. Maybe they're, they're good throughout the day, but it's just, you just can't get them to wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I promise this illustration is going somewhere. I remember one time when I was potty training one of my boys and I was trying to help him understand what to do when he needs to wake up in the middle of the night, but but he woke up and, and he came to me and he said, Dad, I wet the bed, I'm sorry. And I walked upstairs to go help him and, and there he was trying to pull all of his sheets off the bed and I was thankful that he was trying to help. But I watched my little boy try to grab all of his sheets and all of his blankets and everything that had been needing to be washed. And he was going to take it to the washing machine and he couldn't carry it. And it was the sweetest moment to try to watch him. He even in the middle of the night, uh, was trying to, trying to hold all of it together. And I reached down and I said, I'll get it buddy. And he said, thank you. And I reached down and I grabbed it and I took all of his sheets, took them to the washing machine, washed them, dried them, and the next day he had clean sheets again. But for me, that was a picture of what Jesus did on the cross. All of our 
mess and all of our dirty laundry, it was too heavy for us to handle. But the Lord Jesus took all of that on the cross. We said last week that he wore it on the cross. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, uh, it says that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. There's that great exchange. He took on our sin and we got his righteousness in that moment. It's known as the great exchange. Quite honestly, in my high school years, this was the premier spiritual truth that led me to, to my faith in Jesus, knowing that this gift of faith that he gave us, this great exchange, was something that he took on our sin so that in that moment, when the Heavenly Father saw him on the cross, he saw your sin. But when we accept Jesus' righteousness that was freely given to us, when the Heavenly Father looks at you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. He sees the righteousness of Jesus. That means that the gift that he gave you, we get to accept freely as Christ followers. And we live in that every day, every moment. It never changes. It's never over. If you have given your life to Jesus, then God sees you as forgiven, as accepted, as loved, as his own son, as his own daughter. Can I just help you understand something today? God, quite frankly, loves you more than you'll ever understand, more than you'll ever imagine. And if you've never placed your faith in him, today is the day. Just a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I need you. I need you to cover my sin. I want to give my life to you. I want to become your follower. I want to turn away from my sin and I want to walk in new life with you. Thank you for your sacrifice. I believe that you're the son of God. Please save me. If you pray a prayer like that, welcome to the family of God. It's the best decision you'll ever make. Christ followers, let me just encourage you. There is no fear. I know we're experiencing like the craziest cultural moment of our lifetimes for some of us. We're going to talk about this in the history books for, for years to come. There will be conversations about when COVID took over. Paul's going to say in the book of Philippians, um, Philippians 1.21, that to live is Christ and to die is gain. That means, Christ followers, if you're alive here, you can serve, you can, you can give your life away. In the same way that Jesus gave his life here on earth, you can give your life away. You can serve, you can minister. You can reach out to those who need hope in this moment. You have the Holy Spirit in you. That is to live, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. We don't lose anything. In fact, we gain everything when we die. Christ followers, when we die, we're immediately in Jesus' presence and um, for eternity. So let me just encourage you, there's nothing to fear. I mean, sure, we've got some work to do while you're here on earth and we've got to hunker down and we've got to do the social distancing and all that's great, but there's nothing to fear. So let me just encourage you, this is your moment just to continue to develop your relationship with God, to deepen your relationship with God. Next week's Easter. This is a, an incredible time to dive in the scriptures. Continue on with our study on in the gospels. In fact, just right below here, I'll, I'll list out the chapters that you should read each day. Just one chapter a day. Don't feel like you have to catch up if you're behind. Just pick one day, read one chapter, and develop your relationship with God. Dive in. He loves you. He wants to build his relationship with you in this moment. Love you. See you next week.